Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Walk Time Blog number 15, Arduino Light Switches. Once again, it's not a Walk Time Blog because it's Christmas holidays, I'm at home working on the house. A couple of years ago, I set up a light switch in the bathroom, which had an Arduino in it. At the time, I was using a Dietschmiller, and I had a Seed Studio Ethernet shield connected to it, which is the old ENC 28J60 base shield and um, a couple of buttons, ran Ethernet to it, and ran um, some really homebrew, dodgy power over Ethernet. And uh, the way I had it set up was that when you pressed one of the buttons on the panel, it would make a connection over the home network to a Linux machine, which would then um, send a signal to an output controller, which would turn the bathroom lights on and off, which all worked pretty well. In fact, I have the original of that right here. I don't know how well this camera is going to work with close-up, but we'll give it a try. So the way I did this was I used a standard blank clipsal wall plate, which is what electricians typically use for covering up power points and things like that when they've been removed. It's just, um, it doesn't have these buttons in it originally, obviously. I just bought it as a blank wall plate. So I drilled some holes in it, used a bit of Vero board, and put these little LED illuminated push buttons into it with a whole mess of wires which I brought across to some headers. And as I said at the time, I had it plugged into a Seed Studio Ethernet shield. Since then I replaced it with um, the Freetronics Ethernet shield because it's got the handy power over Ethernet stuff on it. It meant I didn't have to do the little DC jack spliced into the Ethernet cable trick. So the result is that this sits inside the wall. This mounts on the wall. The LEDs illuminate the push buttons and when you press one, it sends a signal across the network. Lights turn on and off, which is pretty cool but it was a real pain in the ass putting it together because I had to wire up everything on this board and as you can see cabling like this is a real pain <clears throat> it's a little bit unreliable as well and it just takes ages so um, as our renovations progressed I wanted to do a bunch more so what I did was as an experiment I made another one on a prototyping shield which was an improvement um, because it meant that I could simply plug this straight into an Arduino for testing like for software development or whatever and it would all work, it'd be nice and handy, no nasty wires. It was still a bit annoying though because I had to do lots of jumper wires and things like that. So I figured I should just make some proper PCBs, which is what I did. So I ordered a bunch of PCBs. Um, I made it in the format of a shield. So this is what goes in the back of the light switch. This has just been a personal project so far. I didn't really have any intention of making these available. So it's an Arduino shield, but it's not actually you know, available for sale or anything like that. If anybody's actually interested in this, maybe I'll um, I'll release some. I had 50 fabricated because that was a reasonably economical volume to do it at. Uh, and I've learned a few things, so if I am going to release it, I'll do an upgraded version. I might talk about that in a second. So what this does, basically, it saves all of the little jumper wires on the prototyping shield and lets me make a a little control panel without any jumper wires, just soldering stuff in. So what I have over here are a number of panels in different stages of construction and this phone is really having trouble focusing. I'll try backing it up a little bit. No, it just can't handle it. Lack of light. Maybe this will improve things. Not a lot. Okay, so I've got two-way, four-way and six-way control panels in different stages of construction. The way I designed this PCB, I don't know if you'll be able to see it that clearly, is that there are positions for six different buttons, different button designators, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now you can see that the two outer ones are doubled up. That's not actually so that you can put buttons into both of these, it's just so that I can have a more aesthetically pleasing position. So what I do is if I want like a single way switch, like an on and off button, I populate the middle two. If I want four way, I populate these two and these two. Or if I want six way, I populate these two, these two and these two. And that way it maintains nice spacing. So um, if I just had a single position for the outer buttons, the spacing wouldn't have been quite as aesthetically nice. So the end result is that I can either populate it with a pair of buttons like this, and this one, as you can see, it's got all the surface mount parts on it already for the pull-down resistors and current limiting on the LEDs and things like that. And you'll notice that I've populated the parts even for the buttons that I haven't used. I find it's easier just to populate everything, whether it's used or not. 
uh, and that, that way I can batch assemble a whole bunch of PCBs and it doesn't matter if, what buttons I put on them, they'll just have all the parts ready to go. So that's a two-way. Over here you can see a four-way and up here I have a six-way button ready to go. This particular one I fitted headers onto it so I can plug it straight into an Arduino and do testing. Um, these other ones, now this gets back to part of the, um, the reason I might do another revision. One of the problems is that once you stack this onto you know, a board with um, an Ethernet shield, it doesn't actually fit inside the hole that um, is mounted in the wall. So what I need to do is separate it. And now here's one that is pretty much complete so you can see the end result. So that's the wall plate, and this is a two-way switch obviously. And the way I do it is that I take these blank wall plates, drill the holes out to suit the number of buttons I want, and then use some Araldite and some handy Lego spacers and glue the PCB in so that the front of the button is flush with the panel. The end result is pretty cool. Then I use uh, these IDC cables and um, solder it onto a ProtoShield short and this then plugs into the Arduino which goes inside the wall. So that way the Arduino and Ethernet shield and everything or Ether 10, whatever I happen to be using, is well separated and there aren't any clearance problems. Oh yeah, one other little interesting thing on here is that on the prototyping shield what I've done is fit a DS18B20. There are a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, because I'm running these using power over Ethernet, the device inside the wall can actually get pretty warm. And I was curious to know how warm, so I thought it'd be good to put a temperature sensor in there. So what I can do is read the temperature off the Arduino that's mounted inside the wall and report it back periodically to some uh, web-based system. And the other thing is that I use the identifier off the DS18B20 to seed the MAC address for the Ethernet shield. Uh, one of the annoying things about setting MAC addresses in sketches is that you have to set it within, you, know, you have to program it in the sketch itself, set it as a variable. And that's really annoying because it means that if I'm building a whole bunch of identical devices, I have to invent MAC addresses and assign them manually to each device. And that sucks. So what I do instead is read, uh, when the sketch starts up, it, it searches the one wire bus for a temperature sensor, finds the first one, in this case it's the only one, it then reads the identifier off it, and it throws away the first couple of bytes because that's the family identifier, it throws away the last couple of bytes because that's the checksum, and it uses the middle part of the device identifier which just happens to be the exact number of bytes necessary for an Ethernet MAC address and then it uses that as the MAC address for the network connection. So it means that the sketches can be the same in every light switch and each time I get a unique MAC address. Which is cool. Nice little side effect. I might write that one up as a tutorial sometime. So the end result, as you can see, is this. Mounts flush in the wall, illuminated buttons. You press it, sends a signal off and stuff happens. Lights turn on and off curtains open and close, fans start and stop, and various other things. Uh, so that's my little family of light switches being assembled at the moment. And um, if anybody's interested in these... Oh, that's right, I was going to talk about improvements. So after I started doing this, and I discovered the clearance problems, I thought that what I would probably do in future, for a future revision of this, is keep the headers on here, because they're handy for debugging purposes, but also bring all of the Arduino headers into um, like a two-way strip down the middle so that I could put an IDC connector on there and then I could um, pre-crimp a whole bunch of cables and then just clip a cable onto the back of it. That would be really handy because it means it would be very quick um, assembly because the thing is when you're doing a lot of these making it efficient for assembly is really critical. It would be nice to have a shield that has nothing but an IDC breakout in the middle have an IDC bracket on here and then just have a standard cable plug it into both and away you go. The other thing I'd probably do is incorporate the temperature sensor directly into this board as well. So once again I want to eliminate anywhere that I'm doing manual jumper wires and things like that because you just burn time when you do it that way. It'd be nice to have it all neatly integrated. Um, in terms of the spaces, I don't like using Lego like this either so I've been thinking about maybe um, doing something on the MakerBot, printing up some little spaces 
It's just that these pieces of Lego happen to be the perfect size to mount the PCB and get the buttons perfectly flush. So I could make up little blocks on the MakerBot that replicate that. So those are the light switches in my house and um, I'll give you some updates on some more stuff. There's a lot going on at the moment around the house with home automation and gadgets. So hopefully some stuff that's interesting. See ya.